from the crime reporters of the day. In the old days, whenever the newspapers printed a photo from a murder or an accident, they used to put an X to mark the spot where the body was found. The Hawks used X's throughout this film and even offered the crew a $100 bonus if they used one of their suggestions for the placement of one of those X's. We'll talk about just where they were and how they did them after we see the picture. One of my favorite stories about Scarface concerns the casting of George Rath. He was born and raised in Hell's Kitchen in New York City, and he became a prize fighter and a nightclub dancer. He was a very uh, fancy dancer, this guy was. Did the tango beautifully. Ironically, his business brought him into contact with many of the top racketeers of the 1920s, men whose lives bore, a, let's say, a very strong resemblance to the leading characters in the picture we're about to see, a uh, question of uh, art imitating life, perhaps. Rath arrived in Hollywood in the late 1920s, but he didn't make much of an impression at first. Howard Hawks hadn't even seen Rath in a movie and didn't find him at a casting call. He did notice him, though, in the audience at a boxing match, and he thought he looked exactly like this character, Guido Ronaldo, that he wanted to use. However, once he was on the set, Rath was so nervous that he could barely deliver his lines, and Hawks gave him a coin. If you've ever wondered where this came from, this is the story. Hawks gave him a coin, told him not to worry about the lines and the dialect, just concentrate on flipping this coin. Raft was so intent on the coin that his lines sounded totally casual and natural. So that tossing business, which became the Hollywood stereotype for the ultimate tough guy, was actually invented to soothe a novice actor's nerves. Okay, our stars are Paul Muni and Dvorak, Boris Karloff, and George Raft with director Howard Hawks making a cameo appearance himself. You see him as the man on the bed. Look for him. Here's the story of a gangster known as Scarface. How many X's did you spot in the opening credits? If I had a couple of O's, I could... Oh, the X's are gone now. See, they knew I'd win. Okay. Uh, we, we, let's get back to the subject. We were talking about the X's that came up in the movie that Howard Hawks put in. All right. Uh, Howard Hawks' name comes up over an X in the very beginning of the movie, in the opening credits. Also, when Boris Karloff was killed during the bowling match, the camera cut to the score sheet, where the strikes, of course, were marked with an X. Uh, during the St. Valentine's Day Massacre, that was another one. Remember the pattern on the grid above the bodies formed a series of X's, those wooden beams. And one of the bodies had its arm crossed to form an X. Finally, George Rath lived in apartment 10, which was marked with the Roman numeral X. I hope you saw the beginning of this movie and you know what we're talking about. Well, anyway, while Scarface is considered a classic today, many people weren't happy with it in 1932. Will Hayes who administered the Motion Picture Production Code, refused to give Scarface the seal of approval unless cer certain changes were made. He felt the movie didn't state clearly enough that crime does not pay. Hayes also didn't agree with the ending that we just saw. He wanted Tony Camonte brought to justice and executed for his crimes, but Howard Hughes sued the New York Censor Board, and he won, and he was allowed to release the version that we just saw, uh, where uh, Tony Camonte met his fate uh, when he was gunned down in the streets. 